Hello guys and welcome to another calculus video. In this video we're going to be checking out this awesome infinite sum on the left. As you can see it's the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 2 to the n over 3n factorial. It's going to take us through a few different concepts with power series and differential equations and I think it's going to be pretty interesting. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy the video and let's jump right into it. So first I'm going to want to generalize this infinite sum. A little bit into a more general function. So currently we have the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 2 to the n over 3n factorial. And we can immediately see that this is pretty closely linked to e to the x because e to the x equals the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. We have lots of similarities in here. Uh, we have something raised to the n power and divided by n factorial, but over here we just have that 3n factorial. So we're going to define a function f of x is equal to the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 2 to the n, or uh, sorry, x to the n, x to the n over 3n factorial. And that looks pretty nice, but something we may want to do here to actually make this a little bit easier is we want to kind of line up the uh, terms in we want to line up the powers with their coefficients. So as you can see in e to the x, each term, uh, x raised to some power, has a coefficient of 1 over that same power factorial. So I want to line up that power, uh, those powers and those factorials in f of x. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to just make this x to the 3n rather than x to the n. And it's really easy to go between uh, our old f of x and this f of x since we just have to set x to cube root of x, right? So it's, um, in this case, f of the cube root of, of 2 would be our um, original question, which I'll just call it s, right? So let's do some analysis on this function. Now, clearly it's not equal, just equal to e to the x. If we were to write out the first terms, we can go ahead and just see this is going to be 1 plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 6 over 6 factorial and so on and so forth. And as you can see, it sort of matches up with e to the x, but it's just missing a few terms in between. So what we can actually do is do some analysis on this function and its derivatives real quick, because this is actually in the form of a Taylor series. So since we have the Taylor series with this function, we can really easily reverse engineer uh, the nth derivatives of this function. So f of 0 is just 1. f prime of 0 is just 0 uh, because there's no x term right here. f double prime of 0 is also 0 because there's no x squared term. f triple prime, or uh, that's 4, sorry. f triple prime of 0 is just 1 because of that 3 factorial right there. And we could keep on going on and on and on, but in general, f to 3n of 0 is 1, and all other derivatives of um, f at 0 are 0, right? So this actually gives us a pretty interesting relationship because uh, this doesn't actually only hold true at f of, at, at 0. So if we are to differentiate f of x three times, so f triple prime of x, right, we would find, uh, I guess we'd have the sum from n equals 3 to infinity because those first three terms will disappear as we differentiate them away. And then we'll have 3n times 3n minus 1 times 3n minus 2 x to the 3n minus 3, all over 3n factorial. And just go ahead and, and canceling all this with all that, we will just have 3n minus 3 factorial. Oh, I said we would delete those first three terms, but I guess that only the first term would be deleted. Um, and so overall, we just end up with this sum, right? And if you see, if we shift the index, so we uh, decrease n by 1 here and we increase it on the inside, we would just end up with our original function again. So now that we've figured out this relationship, this gives us a lot of clues as to uh, the actual nature of our function, because we can write the differential equation for f of x, y triple prime equals y. So let's go ahead and solve this differential equation. 
Now this is just a simple uh, third order linear differential equation. And since we only have constant coefficients, we can solve it using just the substitution method. So we assume y equals e to the ax. This is just the way to solve all equations, uh, all differential equ equations of this type, where you have um, just simply uh, y and its derivatives all added together with no functions multiplying by them, only just constants and uh, constant multiples. And you can always reduce it to a polynomial equation. So if y equals e to the ax, y triple prime is going to equal a cubed e to the ax minus e to the ax equals 0. And if we factor out a cubed minus 1 equals 0 because e to the ax cannot be 0. Uh, and so this tells us we if we factor this, we can find our different solutions for this. So the three solutions to this equation are a equals 1, a equals, uh, I'm going to call this omega 1, and a equals omega 2. And the reason I'm giving it these uh, special names of omega is because these are called the complex cube roots of unity, because as you can see, this is an equation where a cubed equals 1. And so uh, you could use the quadratic equation to solve for these complex cubes of root unity, but I know them off the top of my head, so... Uh, omega 1 is equal to uh, negative 1 half plus square root 3 over 2i, and omega 2 is equal to negative 1 half uh, minus square root 3 over 2i. Some interesting properties about these is clearly you can see omega 1 plus omega 2 is equal to negative 1. That's going to come in handy later. And um, omega 1 squared equals omega 2 omega 2 squared equals omega 1. These are also going to come in handy later. So these are all properties of um, the complex cube roots of unity that we're going to need. So just a reminder that our three solutions to our differential equation, uh, well actually our general solution to the differential equation would be y equals c1 e to the x because we have this uh, a equals 1 plus c2 e to the omega 1 x plus c3 e to the omega 2x. Now all we have to do is plug in our initial conditions and solve for these three variables. All right, so uh, we have an infinite number of initial conditions to pick from, but we're just going to uh, use those first three. So f of 0 equals 1, f prime of 0 equals 0, and f double prime of 0 equals 0. So clearly for f of 0 equals 1, when we plug in 0, uh, into all of these factors, we're going to end up just finding c1 plus c2 plus c3 is equal to 1. Next, when we take f prime of 0, uh, for c1, it's not really going to affect it because the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, but for these other terms right here, we're just going to be bringing that power to the front because of the chain rule. So we're going to have c1 plus omega 1 c2 plus omega 2 c3 equals 0. And for the last, uh, for f double prime of 0, it's going to be the same thing. We're going to have c1 plus omega 1 squared c2 plus omega 2 squared c3. And just a reminder, what I just uh, stated earlier, because of the properties of the complex cube roots of unity, um, omega 1 squared is just equal to omega 2. And omega 2 squared is just equal to omega 1, right? This is equal to 0 as well. And so this is a pretty simple uh, set of a system of equations. It can be solved pretty much just by guessing, honestly. But we're just going to solve it using some simple elimination. So we're going to add these two equations together. So we're going to get 2c1 plus w1 plus w2. I always say w because it looks like a w. It's really omega plus omega 1 plus omega 2 c3 equals 0. And just a reminder, uh, what we stated earlier is that omega 1 plus omega 2 is just equal to negative 1. So I can rewrite this here pretty simply as 2c1 minus c2 minus c3 equals 0. 
And if I combine that with this equation right here, it's pretty simple to see that 3C1 equals 1 and C1 equals 1 third. All right. Now, the thing that we're, what we're going to do next is we're going to subtract these two equations right here. So when we subtract the second equation, we're going to get that omega 1 minus omega 2 C2 plus omega 2 minus omega 1 C3 is equal to 0. And if we go ahead and just rearrange this on both sides, we will find that omega 1 minus omega 2 C2 equals omega 1 minus omega 2 C3. This just tells us canceling omega 1 and omega 2 on both sides because they're, that's not equal to 0, that C2 is equal to C3. And because C2 is equal to C3, we can substitute that into the, our first equation and we'll get that 1 third plus 2 C2 equals 1 yielding C2 equals 1 third, and that's also equal to C3. So that tells us the exact value of our uh, function that we just derived earlier. So let's go ahead and apply that and figure out the answer to our question. All right, so first let's do a little bit of simplification on our function f of x. So uh, having e to the omega 1x and e to the omega 2x is a little bit messy since those are complex numbers. So let's expand that out and see if we can simplify it at all. So that's going to be e to the negative 1 half plus square root 3 over 2i x plus 1 third e to the negative 1 half minus square root 3 over 2i x. And so as you can see, we can just factor out e to the negative 1 half x out of both of these. So we can just write this as 1 third e to the negative x over 2 times e to the square root 3 over 2i x plus e to the square, square root 3 over 2i x negative. And in case you don't recognize this, if I go ahead and divide it by 2, and multiply by 2 on the outside right here. This is actually just the definition of cosine of square root 3 over 2x. Uh, as you can see, we have this negative and these imaginary numbers here. So I can just replace this with squ cosine square root 3 over 2x. All right, and this leads us to our final answer. Uh, you remember that f of the cube root of 2 gave us our uh, original question because if you plug in uh, x equals cube root 2 you will get the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 2 to the n over 3n factorial and so this is going to be equal to 1 third e to the square root uh, cube root of 2 sorry plus 2 thirds e to the negative uh, I guess this would be 2 to the negative 2 thirds because uh, we have 2 to the 1 third over 2 to the 1 times cosine of square root 3 over cube root 4. So that's overall a pretty interesting answer, I think. Um, you know, we have sorts of weird powers of 2 in here, but uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this rather interesting, peculiar problem and uh, rather fun solution. We got to use differential equations, some analysis of infinite sums, connections through complex numbers, and um, the cube roots of unity. And yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you next time.